What's up guys? I'm back. I did eight days in a row. Took a few days break uh, with no heads up and I apologize for that. It was the 4th of July. I was getting super sort of like tired at the end of the week there. Um, so I took a few days off. Vlog is back on now. Plan to continue doing this as much as I can. Uh, but I'm definitely going to try and manage my burnout because that was bad. Um, but I'll let you know. So today... We're taking a look at um, pretty much where we left off. We wrote all of this awesome code, and we now have to figure out how we balance ERB and we balance Ruby. And that's a really fine line to straddle here because in the past, I've written in all Ruby. What I've shown you in the last few vlog episodes was all ERB, and that's been great too. But I think there's a really fine balance that we can take, so let's try and hit that today. Now... I was thinking deeply about this, and uh, before I started recording, I was like diving into like this content for method that you might have used in your layouts before. Content for is really cool, and actually, I was looking at um, this idea of like, can you use a partial to rent and and yield to a block if you're inside of a partial, and then how would we go about like taking these titles? and making them interchangeable and like configurable and stuff like that. And I was like, not really sure what I was gonna do exactly. So it's kind of like doing a little bit of research and I should have recorded it. I kind of didn't because I was, I was honestly kind of like, I'm not really sure where I'm going. Um, so I did a little research and like found this Stack Overflow question. And the guy comes up with like, He's like, here, I'd ideally like this code where it's render partial with a name and I give it some variables and then it yields to a block and then I can print out stuff. And this is actually completely possible. You can definitely do that. You just have to make sure you render a layout. So layouts are special. They're different than partials in that they allow you to yield to a block. This is useful information. Um, and could potentially allow us to like skip much of the Ruby stuff, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Um, but you basically like write a yield in your in your um, in your layout and then your render layout allows you to do that. So it kind of works like a layout and a partial like combined, which is cool. Um, but then I was like, well, you know, that's gonna require lots of locals and then like if these layouts are always in the gem like it's not very flexible and it's going to be really hard to override the headers and the titles and things like that and I was like I'm not exactly sure that I want to go in this direction so I was just basically reading like what can content for do because I know that you can yield um with a specific name so you could say yield title and then your um your views could do like content for a title and then you would just, it would just like put that in to the yield section. And, you know, like that works for layouts and stuff. But if you want two calendars on the same page, like good luck. Like it's not going to work because you would have to generate dynamic names for each like calendar and like didn't seem right. Like it just seems overly complex and we'd be going down this like rabbit hole that wouldn't be a lot of fun. So. Without further ado, I'm going to transfer this to my previous self because I'm recording the intro after I recorded the most of the vlog. So I'll jump back and we'll just start diving into the code and playing with it um, without diving into content for because that I decided, you know, this doesn't seem like the direction that will get us the approach that we want. And I'm pretty happy with what I came up with today. So hope you enjoy the vlog um, and Let's do this. So last that we checked, we had this giant um, list of methods that we used to have in our simple calendar gem. We deleted all the code in them, but we kept the method names around. And this was kind of important because we needed to see all of the things we needed before so we could clean it up. Um, but now really, I think we can delete most of these. I think these are the three or the two um, core methods we're going to need and we can start playing with this inside our Rails app. So I'm going to leave these calendars side by side here 
Um, and I'm going to uh, put a horizontal line in between them to separate them, but you'll be able to see that. And we're going to experiment sort of with like what we want our implementation to work like. Um, and I've in the past, I've done these things like month, calendar, um, and then you pass in your options, like maybe you have events and there's meetings, and then you do day, um, meetings for that day, and then inside this block you can print out the day, and so on. And this is pretty good. Um, I'm going to leave out meetings because that's a later feature that we're going to add. This is like what we had in the past, and I really like this because it's easy to just drop into your application. But this month calendar thing is a little... It's not really necessary, and I don't really mind um, just jumping straight into saying, like, let's access this simple calendar. Calendar, um, let's create a new one. We have to pass in self. So the self is actually this view that we're inside. So self, in this case, because we're in ERB, is something special here, and it's like a view context. Um, and it's what gives us access to all, like, the render methods and things like that. Uh, link to, you name it, that's important, and we're going to need to use that inside of our gem, um, and we're going to accept that as the view context. So that's really all we need there. Hopefully in this case, we're not going to need that many options, and then we'll just be able to call render and pass in a block. So we're already making some progress with cleaning this up. I think this is going to be a lot better. And if we save this, we'll see what happens. It definitely should break. And there's my test from earlier with the old calendar. Um, but we got a horizontal line. So one of the weird things, and maybe you, if, if you know the answer to this, let me know in the comments. But um, when you change, so I'm using a local gem. Um, let me pull up the gem file here so you can see this. Um, I've got gem simple calendar here loaded from a local path on this computer. Um, every time I make a change to the gem, I have to restart the Rails server so it can reload those things. I've looked at auto load in the past, and uh, it's never really worked for me. Um, and I've read tons and tons of things on it, tried all this stuff, and it's never really worked. Um, so maybe if you know how to get these gems to like reload on every request, let me know. Uh, but I've never, ever been able to get it work to work. So that's one of those caveats that I'm dealing with that I apologize because it's going to be really slow. So we have to uh, restart the Rails server, refresh the page. This is the error we were expecting, and it's basically saying that um, we passed in a block and uh, we weren't really expecting a block. So in this case, we need to change it to ampersand block so that Ruby knows that this block that we passed in is a block that we should accept. So if we jump back to our simple calendar code, save it, restart our Rails server, jump back to Chrome, refresh our page, this is uh, now functional. It doesn't print anything else out, but that's totally fine because we didn't tell it to do that. Now, one of these pieces here that I find really interesting is like this table generation is much nicer to deal with um, when it's in ERB. I was doing these like content tags and concats and like all this nested stuff that was really nasty to do in Ruby. Um, and I'd like to be able to do that inside the gem. So just provide a partial in there uh, that we can do. So first off, in order to do that, we need to write an adder accessor for view context so that we um, can set that. So we can do view context equals the prem we just passed in. And here we can call view context dot render. And we can just say a template name. And I'm going to do a partial so that we can pass in locals into it. So we can pass in the variables into it that we're going to use. Um, and then that's it. Let's see if we can get this to work. So let's restart our rail server again. It's going to be really painful. Um, what we're looking for is actually an error here. Or wait, we're not going to get an error because I've actually created a app views meetings calendar that's empty. Um, so no error. 
it's printing out this calendar uh, HTML ERB file. It's relative to wherever you're at. So because we called this in meetings index, this calls render inside the gem, which happens here, which calls calendar, which because we've not appended any, so there's this thing called the view paths. Um, and that is the this thing that's like a list of locations in your Rails app to look for views, like partials and things like that. We actually will need in eventually to put our gem folder into that list, but right now we can just create the calendar file inside the meetings folder and do that here. So if we paste in the code that we had before, this is going to be really cool because we'll be able to use this table um, and we'll be able to edit it and allow users to like add this into their own app and then override these things. And that will be nice for people to be able to like tweak that. Um, ideally, what we can get rid of is all these class options everywhere because they were horrible to deal with. And if we let you just customize the partial and put your own classes in or anything else you want, it will save everyone so much trouble. It's like really painful to deal with that in Ruby, but it's perfect to deal with in ERB. So we're like finding that balance and it feels right. So if you want to change these table classes, it's going to be way easier than it ever was before. So we're, we're making good progress. Um, so I'm going to save this and then let's see what happens. Now, if we restart the Rails server, refresh our page, we should get an error. And the reason why we're going to get this error is it's going to say there's an undefined local variable or method called date range. And mm -hmm. that's absolutely true because we have date range here. Um, but our calendar doesn't have any idea what the date range is. So we need to actually go and take the code from the date range and then move it into the gem. So I'm just gonna take these two lines here and put it in the gem as, let's do private methods. Um, because these are really the only ones we want to expose publicly. Um, he, uh, we can take these methods, or take these variables, make them methods instead, and then, um, and then make some progress with this. So if we, take this and make date range that and we get rid of this. We now have um, a lot of uh, the table stuff already sorted out basically. So we can give the partial these variables. So we can say a date range is going to be the value from this uh, date range method. And then the same with the start date. So we'll have start date. Actually, let's check to see if we need start date. Does our calendar need that? So we have the date range, with the date range. We have the start time, but that's for the meetings. One thing we're missing here is we forgot to grab the links uh, and the title at the top of the um, calendar. So we should grab these and move them in. And that is going to reference the um, the date range as well as the start date. So we will need to pass in the start date as one of the options into our method or into our partial. So if we set start date here equal to start date and I move this onto a new line so it's easier to read. Let's move that out and let's move this in too. So that's starting to look pretty good. Um, we can also move that over. Um, we'll wrap this in parentheses just so it, it formats nicely. Now we're starting to make some progress. We've got the render. We know exactly which variables are like crucial to rendering this out. And then our start date and our date range are the only two that are like um, requirements so far. So let's Let's restart our server and see if we can make some progress on this. Cool. Um, so now we have undefined local method params, and that, of course, is because we're accessing params um, inside the start date method. Now, something I'm not completely sure is if our view context can access params. 
Um, so maybe we can try that here. So we can say like view context.params. And of course it pulls it out. So we can just do view context.params here to access the regular params hash that we're used to. But because we're like passing that in as a variable, we're not in the same context anymore, uh, which is maybe a little confusing. We just basically don't have access to all those variables that are normally there by default in your um, in your views. So because we're doing this and we're abstracted out, um, we have limited access to things, which is totally fine. Um, and the view context allows us to do pretty much everything we need. So this is cool. And now we can restart one more time and refresh the page. And in theory, if this all goes well, we now have a calendar being rendered through the gem and a partial. And that is super duper cool. We've basically reduced the lines of code for this, like gigantically. There's some flexibility we need to add in with options. Like we need to be able to override the number of days that you want to display, but that's actually going to be super easy. So if we have these options here, um, let's make options a variable at options equals ops. Here we can have this uh, where it's basically options.fetch. So we're going to make sure that it's a, a hash basically. Um, number of days and the default will be three. So it's an agenda calendar by default. Whatever we want to do really, um, it's not a big deal. And then um, let's restart the server and make sure that still works just to be safe, and it does. And then here, if we jump back to our view, uh, index HTML ERB, we have this, the simple calendar render. Here you could just pass in number of days as three. Um, and that's the same one, but if you do number of days one, you now get a two day calendar. Uh, number of days zero, is going to be a, a single day calendar. It's a little weird, of course, because it's the number of extra days. So we probably want to um, we probably want to change that name so it's a little bit more clear. Um, so we can either change this number to subtract one from the value you pass in. So if it's like number of days, we want four, um, and then we subtract one, so we actually have three. So we get three additional days. Because um, we're always going to have the start date, so we can always assume um, that that's going to be the thing. And I think if you're thinking about building a calendar, you know the total number of days that you want, like 4 or 14 or whatever. Um, so I think it makes more sense for us to say, like, this is a, a two-day calendar. Um, or actually, let's do one as the example. And then here we'll do a number of days or 4 minus 1. So we can pull this out into a method called um, length of days or length of calendar. I'm not sure what the best name is for that. And then we can subtract one from that. Um, so we'll do length of days. And then um, that will basically subtract one for that. Or maybe this makes more sense as additional days. And that might make more sense for clarity when you're editing this gem or working on it, that the additional days has the subtract one for an important reason, whereas the length of days doesn't kind of make sense at all to have this negative one um, because it's like a, a tiny little piece there. So I think I'm going to name it additional days so that we can kind of call out that little weird use case there or like very, it's a very like tricky thing to name, um, but I think if we do it this way, it will be much clearer. So we have this now, and we should be able to restart. And everything should still work. We have one day calendar. We can jump back to our code, make it a six day calendar. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have this wonderful calendar already functional here. And we can do like a 14-day calendar. 
and this should automatically split, and it does. Um, something that's interesting here is that we have Tuesday as the beginning. I believe that I was playing with the code, so don't worry about that. Um, I think if we go into like application, <laughs> application.rb rather, um, beginning of week is Sunday. I did something in here where I was playing with Tuesday as the beginning. Um, that does not look correct there. Maybe it's in development.rb Tuesday. Nope, I don't see that anywhere. Let's check our code and see if we have any references to Tuesday because it's definitely weird um, as the start of the, the, the week. Nothing that I can find. Um, so maybe we'll just ignore that for now. Um, and worst case, I deleted that start of the week as Sunday. Oh, you know what? The reason why that this is Tuesday is because today is Tuesday and the regular calendar always starts on the current day. It doesn't have the calculation to go back and forth. That's a very, very important piece. Um, so what we're looking at here is the date range method it has a different calculation than any of the other ones. Um, so this being more, the, the default calendar is more of a, an agenda calendar used for like four days long or maybe one day long. But it always starts with the current day and it never goes back to the beginning of the week. That's an important piece to note for this type of calendar um, and the start date especially. So uh, what we've got here is actually this wonderfully simple calendar now. And we've pulled out almost all of the rendering into uh, an HTML template, which is so cool. And that means that now we can go back into this um, tomorrow and pull out all of the month calendar stuff and build that and build the week calendar. And it will really just be inheriting from this and overriding the date range. And I think that's really it. This additional days method is actually totally specific to um, the agenda calendar. And maybe the agenda calendar becomes its own uh, class too. But what we've, what we've accomplished here today is we pulled out all of the rendering and put it in a view that um, saves us so much work. And so tomorrow um, we'll do, uh, we'll take the month calendar and the week calendar, we'll make copies of that with this new sort of layout, and then we'll go from there.